Hello everyone, welcome to my day one port review of a little indie title known as Halo 5 Forge. Yes, it's finally here, oh my god. So, basically what this is, it's just the Forge component of Halo 5, but there is some multiplayer components. Now, for right now, you can only play with friends, so you have to, you know, know their gamer tag and invite them. You're gonna need your own Xbox Live account, it's free of course to make, you don't have to pay for it on PC, which is nice. No gold or anything, they actually tried to do that in Games for Windows Live era, I believe. Didn't go, uh, over too well. But anyway. A server browser is coming soon, but for now you can make your own apps. Now, from what I'm experiencing so far, the only maps I have access to are the ones made on the PC version of Forge. There's no sharing, like inner sharing between console and PC, which is weird. Now, Forge in general has been, like for those of you who haven't played it since, like, I don't know, Halo 3, which some of you have still been waiting for Halo 3 on PC, never bought an Xbox 360, and I can sympathize with that. Um, it's... It's vastly improved. I guess Microsoft's getting hit hard because everyone's wanting to play this game now. So if you want to play with other people, you're going to pretty much need to find a Discord server or like play with a select group of friends who have Windows 10. You're going to need the Windows 10 Anniversary Edition update to even run this. Or, sorry, even download it. Now, there are some weird requirements for this thing on the Windows 10 store, and let me clarify these really quick. So, it says you're going to need a DirectX 12 um, API. Now, the minimum recommended graphics card is a 260X, which is not a DirectX 12 card. What this means is that it's DirectX 12 feature level 11, which is GCN 1.0 and up. So, the 260X, which is a pretty budget card nowadays, pretty old card for the minimum requirements, while that's not a DirectX 12 card, it does meet those specific feature, require, feature list requirements, whatever you want to call it. Now, the recommended is an R9 390, which is what I'm running, and a GTX 970, which are more DirectX 12 feature card, the R, R, uh, cards, the R9 390 more so. Alright, so let's just get right into it. So, resolution actually just changes on the fly right here. You don't have to wait through a black screen, and it actually shows you, which is kind of nice. You don't need to hit apply or anything. In fact, you don't need to hit, like, apply at all. You can just, like, go back at any time and if you change anything, which is kind of cool. Unfortunately, what's not cool is that there's no 21 by 9 aspect ratios, and there's no uh, really good variety of resolutions. I don't think there's, like, even a... F I'm not even getting 4 by 3 options, which is weird. Now, because this is a, a Windows Universal platform app, you have to... Uh, sorry, you, what am I saying? Already lost here. You cannot run things like Fraps or DxTory for frame rate counters, so that's why you're not seeing one right now. Otherwise, I'd be running that MSI Afterburner. You might be able to capture something with NVIDIA Shadow Play if you do like windowed mode or borderless windowed mode and you record the desktop, possibly. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to use like something that works like, you know, captures HDMI directly like the Elgato HD60, which is what I'm using. So let's just get more into this options menu right here. Audio and video, they're in the same options menu, which is kind of weird. It's a little annoying, but whatever. Text chat, subtitles, uh, maximum texture size for your video card. Frame rate limit. Now, it's limited to 60. I'm assuming that they're going to add cross-platform play where they're going to have, like, controller-only servers and keyboard and mouse-only servers. And, like, you know, you'll be able to play on those. And I, I guess it's because, you know, Xbox One, the power of the Xbox One can't do 120 FPS. So they're going to have to limit both players, uh, bo sorry, both uh, console and system owners, PC system owners, they're going to have to limit them to 60. Which is fine by me. I think 60 is more than acceptable. But... It is a bit of a shame. So we're kind of tied to Xbox One players. V-Sync on or off. You know. FX quality. Uh, the game looks decent. It does lack some effects, I feel. Like, for example, it needs better anti-aliasing. I think this is just FXA. I keep that off because it looks like Vaseline on your screen. Full age quality. You know. Decent amount of options, but I've seen way better. Especially from other AAA titles. I think they're just testing the waters here, even though we've proven well enough that we will buy Microsoft's games, especially Halo. I mean, there's been petitions for Halo 3 for years to come to PC. Especially Halo Wars, which was an RTS. Halo Wars 2 we're finally getting. Anyway, on-foot key mapping. So you can rebind all your keys, which is nice. The only thing you can't rebind is the forge controls. Now, you can do left-handed mouse mode, which works. But that's it. You can't, like, rebind the individual keys for Forge. 
so that's a little annoying. Mouse acceleration. Now, some people have been reporting that there's some really, pro there's some just problems, like auto-aim issues and just, it's like someone grabbing your arm when you're trying to aim. It's like really floating. I haven't noticed that yet, but I haven't been able to shoot anyone because, you know, I don't have any friends. Uh, controller, a lot of options here, actually. So, f fish sticks, you like fish sticks? Halo 4, it's... It's a surprising amount of options. Now you need to have your controller plugged in for it to even have this menu come up, which is a little weird. You also can't exit the game. Like you have to kind of right click out. You have to, or like Alt F4. You can't. There's no me, there's no option to just quit the game entirely. You know the power of the Xbox One. Uh, look acceleration. Yeah, good amount of options. Gameplay. It's all here. I meant to turn this off. I don't know how that. Oh. And of course, there's the restore default option. And you know you don't even have to approve that. You can just go like that. Unfortunately, there's only one restore default option, and that's just for like the entirety of. Or oh, sorry, no, actually no. There's one here. Oh, so, uh, oh, I, I guess I misread. Yeah, there's a restore door default do, default option for all of them. All right, let's just get right into it. So yeah, servers are coming in later. So let's just start in the build menu. You, know, you can pick your team. You can pick your map too, which is. Nice. Check out one of the 343 maps. And you also have, you know, some modifiers that you can do. Right here. Loading times are pretty quick. And you can kind of mess around in the menus while it's loading, which is nice. Now when I say quick, I mean way quicker than Halo's ever been on console. And actually, on the Forge map I chose, it was actually pretty quick. Maybe this map's a little bit bigger, that's why. So it can vary. So yeah, the game's 35 gigs, and it's it's got no FOV slider, unfortunately. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, jeez, I haven't seen this yet. That's actually kind of bad. I wonder if... Uh, I was going to say, is that part of the map? Like, I don't think so. That, that would be crazy if they'd let you customize lighting like that. It shouldn't be like that to begin with. But, mm, or maybe it's because I had my mouse highlighted over them. I don't, I don't know. Anyway... So yeah, no FOV slider, which is annoying. I get that, you know, console players are going to be playing at a very locked F and small FOV. That's why you, you're able to play consoles, like console games on a TV without getting sick very often. Because, hey, it's farther away from you, but with a monitor it's up close. So, you know, you're more likely to get nauseous. I haven't measured the FOV. I don't get sick, but I just thought I'd put it out there. So the menus are probably the, it's, it's probably done the best here. Like, I've, it, it's really nice. So, you know, you have drop-down menus, you have scrolling, you, it's fully mouse-controlled, it's really nice. Now, when you, you have this whole, huge reference right here, and whenever you, like, you know, highlight over a unit or you hit a certain button, this is, this is not normal. When you, um, like, let's say I hold right-click, the menu changes. So, that's a really nice reference. Because, you know, as you know, there's so many keys that you have. And it looks like they separated them nicely here, so you have... You know, all these little different options. You know, you don't have multiple buttons uh, are bound to like the same, multiple actions bound to the same key. Let's just spawn as a Spartan, shall we? Uh, this key. Now, frame rate wise, it runs pretty well. I can't, excuse me, again, because it's uh, this Microsoft proprietary BS. I cannot run a some kind of hook file. What I have noticed is that there's a lot of pop-in, and yeah, there's a lot of flickering here. Performance-wise and looks-wise, it's not great, especially considering my rig. Oh my god, this is kind of embarrassing. Wow. But it is functional, it is playable. Now, when we have lots of players in a map, I'm wondering, you know, how will that work out? Currently, the real only way to play this game online with other people is either with your friends, or if you try to do join like your own like Discord uh, group and then you like set up your own Spartan group and you play with each other. 
I do at least appreciate that they've added in multiplayer functionality, but I would have really liked it if they just added server browsers from the get-go. That'll come later, hopefully. And we'll pretty much get Halo 5 multiplayer on PC for free for the most part, with all the custom games and stuff. I wouldn't mind paying, like, in segments for what I want, so, like, I would almost, like, skip the campaign. From what I've been hearing, it sounds, like, just terrible. Like, apparently people have been able to beat it in, like, four or five hours. But yeah, this is a nice starting point. It does control fairly well. People were really, like, hammering on that mouse and keyboard issue, like, or, sorry, the mouse acceleration issue. I haven't had too many problems, but it does feel a little bit floaty, I will say that. There's no... It's not as bad as a lot of other games I've played. Um... Mm. And vehicle controls are actually not too bad either. Like, it's... It's genuinely, like... It's genuinely, I think, a decent port, but for some, well, I say it's it's decent, but like for Microsoft, it's I'd say it's a little bit more than passable. I mean, considering how much money they have, and like, look at this light flickering issue, like, ugh. and also I'm getting some frame rate drops right now. But I am playing on max setting. Uh, it's free. I will say that it is free, so you can at least try it and get to know it. It's not like Quantum Break where you pay $60 and you just get a god-awful port that you can't even run at 720p with a really high-end rig. I do feel like the Xbox visual quality has held it back a bit. So it's just a little bit more upscaled. And you do have options for 4K resolution, but... I, I don't know. With time, it'll get better, but I'm really sick of Microsoft releasing these mediocre ports. There's a War Ultimate Edition got better over time, Killer Instinct got more updates over time, but, ugh, like, I just want it to be good from the start. Like, is that too much to ask, Microsoft, a multi-billion dollar company? Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. It's a decent port, I'll say that, especially if you can download for free. 35 gigs. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. I'm out.